Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Hearts Fire 4 Prax Botanica as Britain. Let us continue on from where we at last left off. We put down an uprising in Ireland. We've established some more colonial territories in the Middle East. Overall, can anything go wrong for Britain? I don't think so. I, th I think it's really just on the up and up from here on out. You, you cannot get more powerful than this. So currently, uh, what are we missing? We're missing automats. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll have some in production. I know we don't, like, we don't have enough factories for this. Especially since we're still down 10,000 rifles, which is a, uh, a pretty, pretty significant amount. I, I think everybody would agree that being 10,000 rifles down is quite a bit. Uh, decision available. We could do more stuff with the space race. We do have 60 research points. Which I think is enough. For one of these. Is it, uh... Yeah, intermediate engine. 30 days on you. Okay, we'll get that going. So in 30 days, we'll have a new engine. I'm assuming that's going to allow us to research things both faster and with less shit to failure. I mean, Russia, so... I mean, again, we're competing against Russia. I don't know why Russia... I feel like it should be against, like, Germany or something like that. Since Russia was one of the countries that lost the Great War, I can't see them being in a position to really fund a massive space race. Um, so we have more divisions here. Yeah, just deploy in Birmingham for now. And again, reinforcements and gears that actually should be top priority for new equipment. And you two. I guess we'll just assign you into Red Army for the time being. Yeah, unrest is, is erupting in Australia. Bunch of you just been bypassed. Why, wait, why did you all get bypassed? Wait a second. Okay, so it just it just bypasses the uh, the first level here. I mean, I guess that's fine, but then like, why even have it in the first place? I guess other than maybe like labeling these uh, branches, which I guess kind of makes sense. I mean, increased stability, you decrease maximum production efficiency and production efficiency gain. I mean, our stability is at seventy two percent, which seems pretty pretty good. The current situation. Reaching out our context in the IEEC, the automation crisis seems to be affecting uh, them just as much as us. There have been numerous internal protests at the company over the automation policy, leading to a loss of several senior staff at their British headquarters. It seems that the crisis actually weakened EIEC's hold over the British economy. For better or worse, if we are to make a move to break free of the EIEC's influence, now is the time. Well, I mean, if we want to... They protest or to support our decisions... Could side with the private sector here as well. What are you? More support. I mean, 10% stability is not bad. Let's look towards the progressives because we can't go towards the party of General Hag because we did not support um, the more conservative elements. I mean, they have 2% of the vote. They have 2% of, of the upper house. Who, who cares about them? No one. The formation of the SIP. Ever the most unruly part of Britain proper, the various political parties in Scotland have long agitated for varying degrees of independence or autonomy for Britain. Just today, members of the Scottish Independence League and the movement for Scottish autonomy announced that for their merger, the form of the Scottish Independence Party or the SIP. A big time coalition of Scottish Conservatives, Liberals, Nationalists, and Progressives, the SIP is currently dysfunctional at best. Uh, but what is more notable about this is that the party unilaterally agitates for Scotland too, at the very least, to grant the Commonwealth status and a seat at the Imperial Parliament. Naturally, such an idea has been pushed back from the English political scene. Though some radical elements of WP have argued in favor of this de uh, devolution policy. Absolutely, we're not like Scotland have independence. Are you kidding me? Let's see more stuff going on in Arabia. We've got the Holy Army of Arabia now rising up. Which is, I guess, like 1930s alternate universe ISIS. Is there any other wars going on or is it just a war right now? Oh, there's actually a ton of wars going on. The Central Plains War, the Winter Insurgency... Russian Empire and the has toppled the independent provincial government of Athor Manchuria. So you are now a puppet state of the Russians. The independent provincial authority Manchuria. And you are an imperial autonomy of a foreign power. And you probably will end up killing uh, Mongolia very soon as well. I would, uh, I would, have, to, I would have to imagine. I'm going to sign in the Brown Army for now. What do you want to research? Again, it's 33. Going for a 34 plus efficiency tech, I think that seems completely reasonable. Er, industry techs early on is still pretty good. 
It's always good to have industry tech as quickly as possible. We are missing one rare metal. What is that being used for? It's being used for our early heavy ships. I, I'm going to say I don't really care too much about that right now. Upgrade you guys to uh, fighter ones. Why do I have two th separate things of fighters? We should not have two separate things of fighters. We should only have one. But I'm going to take five factories off gun production for now. So at least we're producing a little bit of everything. We're producing the Great War Tauntauns. We're producing the Naval Bombers. Even though, again, we do need... We need a lot of guns. We also need a ton of infantry rations as well. We need 192. Or just 192 days. We need like 3.5k of uh, MREs. Let's go like 3 on that for now. And we're, we're building... No, we're building a Tesla Tower. Which I believe makes every factory 30% more effective. Which is good. Also, we should not be repairing stuff with... Uh... I'm going to go 9 here. And 9 here as well. And then we're going to build a Tesla pack, uh, factories in both of you. Because again, I'm assuming that makes them 30% more efficient. At least I think. I, I, I'm... Not only based not on any actual information, it just sounds right. But a change of course. It's clear now the Prime Minister Eden must forge his own path for the Conservatives. While General uh, Hayes' paternalist may cock the idea, Oliver Stanley's economic plans seem like just the kind of thing that Eden's ministry needs in these coming years. Some of these proposals seem doubt, uh, downright Jacobin, but Stanley has assured the uh, ministry it's the only way forward to make concessions to the Whigs and try to pull support from the right Union members. Hank's body may be spinning his grave, but with any luck, he'll make a uh, potent daimyo to empower Eden's path forward through the crisis. So the Hags like us less. But who gives a shit about the Hags? Like, they don't matter. Also, give me, like, one level of cryptology. Thank you. We can impose tariffs. Poverty rate will improve. Economic health will go down a little bit. Challenge the Imperial Monopolies. For the anarcho-liberals, and they are the... Yeah, I mean, I don't care about the radicals. We'll challenge the Imperial Monopolies. I think we did waste a few days of, uh... A focus time here. I apologize for that. Can I upgrade you to be... I mean, liberal conscription is basically just free manpower. Spain has aligned themselves with the French. I would not be surprised if Portugal uh, were to do the same thing. Because they're both, uh... I mean, Portugal, I think Portugal is on the winning side in the, uh, in the, in the First World War. So they might actually join with our faction as well. And I believe Germany and Italy are supposed to join us, um, depending on the situation. At least, I'm, at least again, I'm, I'm remembering back to when I played this about a year ago. Like, what the conditions there were. Decisions available, reset rocket design. Okay, let's go... Yes, it's way less likely to fail now. Give me the fuel. Give me the stellar research module. Now there's only a 10% chance of failure. Which, I mean, I think that seems pretty good. So you're going to launch that into space. I, I don't know if the Russian AI is actually able to challenge us on this. Like, if the, if the AI actually has these options available to them as well. Form the cryptology department. I'm going to save uh, our civilian factories for now. And of course, we're going to be breaking French ciphers. So we're going to break anybody's ciphers. It's going to be the French. For sure. So again, the hardliners don't support us. But literally everyone else in government does. Like, obviously, like, the hardcore socialists are not going to support the conservative government. We Like, we wouldn't expect them to. But even the moderates are, are pretty happy with us. The, the National People's Party, which I think... Are they the neo-imperialists? Well, they're just a reactionary. The, the neo-imperialists are the British Imperial League. They've challenged the monopolies. Off on the streets. Exercising the robber barons. Let's go... Let's overturn the IE... The EIEC's decision first. I think that makes uh, some sense for us. I just need to pause this quickly I need open up my computer okay accessible launch fantastic can I just launch another one right away 
We're gonna put 50 points into reform. I don't actually know exactly what that does. Ooh, we get more abilities to expand. Excellent, excellent. So we have 265 days on you. Invest and send more workers. Okay. Fine. So, Egypt, I am once again requesting your army. We're going to send you into Syria next. Right, is it Syria is going to be our next uh, target here? So we have Syria and we have uh, Jordan. Oh, yeah, we're going to send both of you. Yeah. Let's just assign one of our commanders. We should have an extra down here. Fantastic. All of you move your way up north. And we'll demand Syrian oil rights. We'll do the Jordan expedition as well. We can have three divisions, let's just say, around the Mon. We have one Jordanian troop. But I'm not worried about him, to be quite honest with you. We've got enough units in the area. I I'm not concerned about Syria or Lebanon. Like, what, what are they going to do? Nothing. Okay. So that's a research speed upgrade. Do we have anything else in infantry? We have 34. Probably want to go more piercing would be my initial, uh, my initial, uh, say here. Let's go for the quadrupod. Just a handful of big mechs probably be better than a handful of small mechs. Even though, again, we are Brit, we have a pretty large industrial sector. I still want to play it at least a little safe. And our wars will be ready in 10 days. We have 25 more days left on you. And what, what do you give us? More stability. But production efficiency and, and uh, gain goes down by a little bit. But I think that's still kind of okay. So let's look at our uh, development right now. Economic health increasing. Poverty rate is, I'm assuming, getting better. Apparently, the literacy rate still at zero. But we're not going to worry about that too much. I'm assuming that's based on where you are in 1933. And not just uh, literally nobody in Britain can read. But who knows? Maybe that actually is the case. I think we take the capital here in in, uh, in Jordan. We should end up winning the fight. Also, did you, Siri, did you just give me the oil rights? Oh, you did. Fantastic. Okay, so we don't need to kill uh, Syria. It's a little bit of a shame because I was really hoping that we'd be able to kill them. They have 83. Why do you have, why do you have such good defense? I mean, if anything, why are my units so ass? I mean, I know they're not my units, they're Egypt's units. Okay, so United States and China is now declaring war on more people. And I think that's kind of fine. If they want to go fight, you know, the rest of China, that's up to them. Maybe they'll end up at war with the Russians as well, and that could benefit us. And okay, we're going to get an encirclement against you. And you are not technically encircled because of this province here. Now, our units are still like complete ass. Egypt, why are your units so piss poor? The IEC protests our decision. We see the lengthy protests from our affiliates in that EIEC who significantly dis uh, disagree with our decision on how to handle the economic crisis. To further emphasize their pleasure, they've ordered a general slowdown in factory output uh, and holding them Britain. Well, not a blatant threat. It's obvious that they are displeased with us. I mean, it's 30 days, man. Introduce filler jobs. Consumer goods go up. Research speed goes up. Stability goes down by 10. Will Black Sea improve both economic health and the poverty rate? Or we just get four factories? Consumer goods research speed... I'm assuming economic health and poverty rates do matter. I don't remember what they do when they go up to the next level. I think they do give you a boost. How many civilian factories are we at right now? 49. I mean, it's, it's essentially like an 8% increase in uh, civilian factory count. And you're the 37 election, which is pretty far from now. You know what? We'll introduce filler jobs. Our stability is going to go down by 10%, but I think our stability is still looking pretty good, all things considered. Um... Especially since we are at war, and once we're no longer at war, we'll be gaining a like a twenty percent something uh, 
point uh, bonus there. Tonkin campaign stalemate. It seems that we are unable to break the lines in North Vietnamese army. And they are also unable to break our lines. Thus, it's clear that we can no longer continue our campaign into North Vietnamese territory. And we'll have to leave them to be as to not put much strain on our fan assets because of the war. So no matter what... We'll join their war. If we lose less political power, we lose the same amount of... Uh... Oh no, you're negative 10% stability. No, we will not abandon Vietnam. I'm going to request all of your forces, please. We are negative 2% war support, but don't, wor don't worry about that, honey. It it's good. We'll sign you here. I'm going to request five, so we need 19 divisions from the British uh, administration here in India. All of you are going to go over to Tonkin. You guys have fun with that. Fantastic. I do see that China has been basically picking a fight with everybody. I'm sure they'll be okay on this. What do I do with you? I guess I'll just leave you. I don't need you right now. And you, my friend, you can just join up Brown Army. That's completely okay. Yeah, and we can't get into Circleman because uh, technically Jordan owns this uh, lake. How's our combat with? I mean, the combat with is fine. Probably because these units are like four, uh... Are four combat with each or something like that. Something ridiculous. Bring you all together. I don't think we're... Tra no, we're training two more units. And we now have 5,000. So now our gun production is fine. So I'm going to take five off of you. I'm going to put three in automations. I'm going to put two in the fighters. Two in the close air support. And probably... Uh, let's, let's, let's put... Do we have hard suits? We do. Let's put two, one in the hard suits as well. Even though I don't know if we're using them yet. We don't, but we'll use them at some point for sure. We'll get some hard, uni uh, hard suit units out and about. And a 1934 Imperial Congress. After the Washington Rebellion, uh, Rebellion, America was put down, and the establishment of the Imperial Parliament after the revolt, which soon transformed into the Imperial Federation, Britain has seen uh, fit to call roughly every four or five years representatives from all dominions and mandates to gather and discuss the future of the Empire. The 1934 conference will be like no other, with Britain staggering from economic hardship and ever more an assertive American Commonwealth and the Federation's affairs, uh, which may topple Britain hegemony over the Empire. This has naturally made the 34 uh, conference a more faithful decision in the Empire, instead of a simple checking up on the previous conferences shared. To simplify imperial politics, two leading factions have formed. Two leading factions have formed two factions: Neo Victorians and the Enlightened Imperialist, which uh, in which the former believes the centralization of the empire under Britain, expanding the white mandates, and later believing for the more liberal era of the empire to benefit all British subjects, white and black, and also split imperial power through the Federation. Okay. The debates on the mini reform. The question of Dominion reform has come up in the conference. Many natives and older Dominions, such as the United Commonwealth, believe that due to the geographical distance and cultural difference, uh, that the mandate should govern with more autonomy and power so that each Dominion can deal with their population's uh, needs. Uh, this has naturally caused anger into the old guard of the Empire, and while many white colonists in the new territories such as Africa cite that decentralizing the Imperial Federation away from Britain will no, uh, be no different than independence, uh, while white colonists fear that by giving power directly to the mandates, the governing authorities might favor the natives over the Anglo settlers. What are the cases set up for the British Prime Minister to have the final say to the Dominion's reforms? Yeah, we're going to go a little bit more uh, reform heavy. Naturally, Imperial Economics and Finance escape by the 34 Conference. Enlightened Imperialist wish uh, for the mandate of Dominions to be self-sufficient, away from the pilgrimage hands of London, so they can stand on their own two feet for the Empire. The old guard have countered with the logical point of trade. The empire is built on trade. By simply throwing away the resources from the colonies needed for the factories in London and the United Commonwealth of America, then what's the point of having an empire in the first place? The debate has been quite fierce, and only the deciding vote from, uh, from Britain will decide or finish the uh, result, uh, either deciding that the empire will dissolve around the imperial trade and the city of London, or being most self-standing establishment for co uh, cooperation uh, within the empire. We are going to go focusing a little bit more around London. And the debates of the military. 
Last topics come up is more likely to be important due to the old and new threats popping up as the Imperial Federation stands on the military. Traditionally, when wars would break out, Britain would raise regiments from all the Empire alongside a standing army to wage war. However, after the Great War, many parts of the Empire would create their own standing army, such as the United Commonwealth of America's Royal Army and the Canyon Security Forces. The Old Guard have argued that there should only be one army, which matches with the Federation's motto of One Nation, One King. However, the Alliance Imperialists have argued uh, that having each mandate having a specialized military to fit a certain military role will allow for more efficient and effective fighting force around the globe in defense of the Empire. So we are going to go, I think, for individual militaries. Fantastic. So let's see. So we're currently evolved the military that requires us to have 100 little sheets of paper. We got a 50-50. And I don't see a reason to throw a 50-50 in here when we are, um, when we're only 110 days away. Okay, we bypass our commitment here. Wait, we're Sons of America. I'm assuming that has to do with our choices that we've made. I don't know where that actually... Okay, it's up here. There's something about African authorities. We have to do one, and then we have to do this. we got a single unified currency. The pound sterling zone. Can I... Do I have a choice here? No, right now we're still doing the filler jobs. Okay, so we can see the Americans have sent troops over here. Like, I appreciate that, but I'm not calling into the war. Like, I think that is just not necessary in any uh, capacity. And you guys just go and be very, very aggressive. Do we have any naval vessels in the area? We don't, because I did send the entire navy to Europe. Yeah, and you know what? Fair enough. So, you know, let, let's bring the navy back to Saigon. We can maybe think about having, like, a small naval invasion from Saigon. But let's just say to uh, Haipong, ass assuming uh, that we don't just push away to Hanoi right now. I mean, if I take Hanoi, that'll probably trigger the peace event. Maybe. It did not. Okay. But we're still going to be pushing our way forward. Is there any other cities? No, there's just these two. Everybody calm down. It'll, it'll get the Hague Theory to support us a little bit more. But again, like, they don't have any, um... They, they don't... They have, like, no political powers. Like, who cares about them? The Imperial Coal and Steel and Anglo-Persian Oil Company will no longer be available as tech teams. Do I even have any tech teams? I do, but I'm not using any of you. Okay. Let's go, because I need all of you as well. Efficiency gain, research speed. You give us a research campus. I don't know what does that actually do for us again. Naval base, supply hub, research campus. It's a 0.5% research speed uh, increase. Which doesn't actually seem good. That actually just seems bad. Factory output goes down, but higher base. Well, what are we on right now? I'm assuming there's just, like, no limit. Noticeable poverty. You know what? Let's... Yeah, let's increase our stability. Let, let's start working towards a 12-hour uh, workday. And I think with uh, the war in Vietnam, the appeal of Congress, is going to be a good time for us to end off for today. So thanks for watching. Have a great day, and goodbye.